lesson 7-5. This is factoring linear expressions. So we've already added and subtracted them. Now we're going to look at factoring them. So the first problem we're going to talk about, we are finding the GCF. That means the greatest common factor of each pair of numbers or monomials. So on this first one, they give us 4x and 12x. So what we do is we are going to break that number down and list it being multiplied, but as only prime numbers. So for example, 4x, well, we don't know what x is, but 4 we know is 2 times 2. 2 is a prime number. Prime means only 1 times that number go into that number, nothing else. 4 is not prime because we have 2 times 2 in there. So we also have times x. So 2 times 2 times x because 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times x is 4x. So all we've done is broke the number down. So then 12x, we do the same thing. Since it's even, I always just start out by dividing by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 is not prime, so I have that 2. 6 can be 2 times 3. So there's 2 times 3. So if I go back and check, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. So we are breaking the number down into only prime numbers. And then we have times x. So then to find the GCF, you go back and look and they circle to show you what numbers are in both of them. They both have 1, 2. They both have two twos and an x. So you take this number times this number times x. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times x is 4x. So the greatest common factor on this one was one of them. They both have 4x in them. So that is your greatest common factor. I'm going to show you another way real quick to do this. This will be the only time I show you this way if it helps you find your factors. So 4x, we have to remember, well, actually, let me do it with the 12, not the 4, because the 12 has more. So on the 12, you just have to remember to do x at the end. You're breaking it in a factor tree. I know you've seen these before. So 12 divided by 2 is 2. 2 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. That means that side of my tree is done. It can't go any further, but 2 times 6. Now, 6 is not prime. It can be broken down again. 6 divided by 2, well, we know 2 is prime, so I'm done with this side. And 2 times 3 is 6. 3 is also prime. So now that I'm done breaking everything down, once it's all circled, you're done. So it would be 2. You go back and write your circle numbers. Times 2 times 3. And then we had times x. That's just another way that you can break it down when you're factoring. So now looking at example B, we have 18A and 20AB. So 18A, since that's even, I'm going to start out with 2. That's 2 times 9. 9 is not prime. It can be broken down into 3 times 3. So 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. Or if you said 3 first, 3 times 2 times 3. The order on that does not matter as long as it equals the same thing. Because 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. And then we have times A. Okay, the second one, 20AB. We'll divide 20 by 2 and you get 10. That can be broken down into 2 times 5. Again, you can use those factor trees if that is easier for you. I'm not going to use them when I work out problems for y'all. So 20, we know we could do 5 times 4 here or 2 times 10. There's not a right order to do. I'll do four, 5 times 4 because we know that's 20. 5 is prime. It can't be broken down into anything else other than 1 times 5. 4 can. 4 is 2 times 2. 2 is also prime. So now I'm done with that. 5 times 2 times 2, which is what we have here. Then we have times A times B. So then we look, they both have a 2 and an A. So we go back and say 2 times A, that is our GCF, our greatest common factor of those numbers. Sometimes, even if they have a letter, they may not be the same letter, which means it's not something that they both have. Okay, you're going to try 1A, 1B. Uh, let's, we won't do 1C. Just do 1A and 1B, and then I'll go over them with you. On 1A and 1B, we are finding the GCF, the greatest common factor. So when we're finding the greatest something, we're finding the greatest of the numbers that can go into this number. We're not counting by that number, okay? So if I look at 12, I'm going to list out my factors this way. So I know I have 1 times 12. Well, I don't really know if I should list it like that. I guess we can. 1 and 12. 2. I really don't think that's not really a factor. Anything but 1. Sorry, guys. 
2 times 6 is 12, but 6 is not prime. You're breaking it down into only prime numbers. 6 is 2 times 3. So we are just listing all the numbers. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. So I've listed everything that multiplies together to be 12. So now I do it with 28C. So we just look at 28. 2 times 14, 14 can be divided by 2 again, which is 2 times 7, 7 is prime. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 7 is 28, and then I have, I guess technically I could put times between all these, and then C, just because we don't know what C is, so we have it. So then we are just finding what they both have in common. So if I look at this, here's a 2, here's another 2. So they both have two twos. I know it sounds silly. So you solve that. 2 times 2 is 4. So my greatest common factor of those numbers is 4. Looking at 1B, the bell might ring on us in just a second on my video. 25X and 15XY. So 25X, I can break that down into 2 doesn't go in there, 3 doesn't go in there, 4 doesn't, but 5 does. I know 5 times 5 is 25. 5 is also prime. Then we have times X. 15. 2 doesn't go in there. 3 does. 3 times 5 is 15. Those are both primes, so we're good. You're basically just breaking it down into all prime numbers. Then I have times x times y. So I look at everything that they both have. They both have a 5 and an x. 5 times x is just 5x. So now we're going to look at what's called factoring, which is the whole title of this lesson. So factoring is kind of using the distributive property backwards, okay? So that's what factored form means. So for example, if we have 8x plus 4, well, to undo the distributive property or work backwards, you find the GCF, like we just did, the greatest common factor of these two numbers, 8x plus 4. Okay, well, they're both even, so I know 2 could go in, but the greatest number that goes into both of them is 4. So what you do is you divide 4 out of each individual piece. So 8x divided by 4 leaves me with 2x. And they just said multiply because 4 times 2x gives me 8x. Then if I divide 4 by 4, I'm left with 1. So 4 times 1 is 4. So then you can take these two numbers, and since it's being added, plug them in parentheses being added because they're both times 4. Okay, the reason that works, I'm going to write that new little piece right here. Oh, I forgot my two. Okay, this is not going to be pretty. It's because if I use the distributive property and multiply this 4 in here, 4 times 2x is 8x, plus 4 times 1, which is 4, which is what we started with, 8x plus 4. Okay, so what we're doing when we factor these expressions is we're basically undoing the distributive property or doing the distributive property backwards. So looking at a couple of examples. So this is factor each expression. So 3x plus 9. Okay, well, that one's a little easy because we can see the biggest number we can take out of both of these is 3. So let me switch colors. I'm going to divide 3 out of both of these numbers. Since I know 3 goes into both, that is the number that goes outside your parentheses. That's the number you are factoring out or pulling out of both terms. So 3x divided by 3 is just 1x plus, because there's a plus between them, 9 divided by 3 is 3. Okay, that would be my answer. That's my factored answer. If you need to check yourself, distribute it back in. 3 times x is 3x. There's a plus between them. And then 3 times 3 is 9. 3x plus 9, that's what we started with. So, yes, we did it correct. Okay, let's look at one more. So, B says 12x plus 7. So when we're looking at this, 12 and 7, okay, well, 12 we know is 2 times 2 times 3 because we've already done that, times x. 7 is just 1 times 7. It is a prime number. They have nothing in both of them. So we cannot factor that because there's not a number I can take out. So you would just say cannot be factored. So what you're going to do now 
let's go ahead and try all three of these to get practice because this is the main point of this lesson. But try 2A, 2B, and 2C, and then I'll go over them with you. You're factoring each expression. Okay, on these problems, we are now factoring. If you remember, that means we are undoing the distributive property. We're finding the GCF for the greatest common number they both have, and we're pulling it out of both of those numbers. So 4X plus 28. Okay, this one has an X. This one does not, so X is not our commonality. So I find a number that they both have. They both have a 2 because they're even, but we've got to find the greatest number they both have, the greatest common factor. So I can take a 4 out of both of these numbers, and it works. So that's what I'm going to factor out. So I have parentheses, 4x divided by 4, I'm left with x, plus 28 divided by 4, I'm left with 7. That is my answer. Now the reason that that works, okay, you don't have to do this next part, I'm just showing, excuse me, showing you. If I multiply that 4 in, I distribute it in, 4 times x is 4x, plus 4 times 7 is 28 which is what we started with. So all we're doing is we are undoing the distributive property when we factor. So on 2B, and there is a reason we do this, guys. This will help us when we start getting into um, solving algebraic equations and expressions. So 3 plus 33x, okay, we can hopefully easily see on this one that the common number, the factor the number we're going to factor out is 3. So if I take 3 out of that, well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, plus 33x divided by 3 is 11x. That would be our answer on that one. Then the last one, 2c, I have 4x plus 35. Okay, 4, that's a pretty small number. The only numbers that go into 4 are 2 times 2 and 1 times 4. So we're looking at 2 or 4. Neither of those go into 35. So the answer on this one is cannot be factored because you can't. There's no number that we can take out of both of those.